continue on with this series and form it, we are going to look at some contextual modeling around our project site using a little bit of um, using some photo modeling techniques, um, not quite photogrammetry, uh, but some similar modes of thinking. So what we're going to do, this is our site right here, and I want to start by modeling this building that is adjacent. And we want to put a little bit of detail into it. We're not going to model every brick, but we want to get some basic ideas. And I'm not going to walk through the entirety of getting all of the detail in, but I'm going to take this tutorial far enough along that you'll be able to infer the rest of what we want to have happen. So the first thing that you'll notice is this is a little bit too low of a resolution satellite photograph for us to work. It's, it's great back here at a distance, but once I zoom in on this, I really, you know, the difference in, you know, exactly what is the edge of this building could mean quite a major difference in our model. You know, if the edge is this fuzzy part here to here, maybe it's 46 feet, maybe it's 54 feet. So I want to get a higher resolution image of this particular location. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my location icon. I'm going to say import satellite. And we're going to, to zoom in at more of the building scale rather than the multiple block scale. So looking just at this building, we're going to hit finish importing. We're going to get a much higher res resolution map that we can start working with. So the first thing that I need to do, if you'll notice, the axis, the Cartesian coordinate axis system is slightly off of my aerial photograph. And we want to match up the axis uh, in our Cartesian coordinate system, the red, green, and blue, with the axis to model the building. And this is something you don't necessarily have to do, but it's going to make your life a lot easier and it's super fast inside of Formit to do. So what I'm going to do is right click, set axis. I'm going to place the axis along a long edge that I can, can observe. So back corner of the building. And then I'm going to drag out this edge to be in line with that outer edge. Once that's done, it's going to adjust my axis so that I can draw directly on top of that. It's an even more important tool when, when your axis is, say, 30 degrees or 45 degrees off. It's going to make things much, much easier to do. So what I want to do next is we're going to trace the outline of this building, starting at the back corner, coming up and across. And I now have a footprint for this building. The footprint is 119 feet in one direction. And it is 50 feet in the other. So north, south, we're running 50 feet. So let's look really quickly at modeling this facade, um, finding the height. Um, and getting things working in a really quick, not perfectly accurate, but accurate for a rough context model kind of way. So again, we're going to use Google Maps and Google Earth. So I've got our location typed in again, 19th and Main. I'm going to switch this to the Earth view so we can start to see how things are coming together. One of the first things that I can do with Google Earth um, turned on is I can look at this in 3D and I can use control to orbit around. So I'm using control in the left mouse to be able to move around in and through and observe the site in 3D. And I can see that this building is um, steps down a little bit here. I'm not going to worry about that in this tutorial, but that's something that's important. And I can begin to get an understanding of the height variance between different buildings. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to a 2D view. And let's go ahead and drop our street view character right in front of this location. So what I want to do next is I want to grab, I want to create a screen grab as square on of this as I possibly can get. So let's go back this direction just a little bit, see if I can do a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. Now this technique, because perspective exists, isn't always going to work for buildings that are above, let's say, about three stories. 
Um, but once things get a little bit taller, I can kind of identify the pattern on the building, and the same technique will work. But rather than looking at the overall height of the building, I would need to take just an edge and say, okay, from here to here is 15 feet, so I know, repeat that over is 30, 45, etc., to estimate the height. But this technique is going to work really well for um, smaller buildings, uh, and then you begin inferring the pattern that you see on larger buildings um, to build this up. But I'm going to go ahead, I want a, a view as square on as I can get it, so I'm in particular looking at these edges and making sure that they are about as vertical as I can get them very quickly in street view. I'm going to hit print screen and switch to Photoshop. File, new, okay, edit, paste. And I'm going to crop the building out in a couple of steps. So I'm going to go once, and then once I zoom in, I'm going to crop the building out one more time, getting right to the exterior edge on each side as best I can. I'm going to take the bottom right to the bottom edge of the door. I'm not going to worry too much about how the contours of the site work with the bottom of it. I'm going to come right to the top of the building with the top piece. So I'm going to get something like that. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So I'm going to do a file, save as, a JPEG file, and let's name this Mike's Clothing. Okay. Back into Formit, I'm going to create a new texture map. So, Materials button, Add Material. Click Texture Map to create a new material. So we're going to name this Mike's Elevation, because that's Mike's Clothing Shop, if you didn't notice. Or maybe more important than Mike's Elevation, perhaps we actually want to get into thinking about this. Let's switch this back to Maps. Let's actually look at this location and see if I can't get um, a little more detail, something better to name this as. There we go. It's probably a better practice to use the street name, 1830 Main Street. That's really what I should be using to identify this. So let's get a little bit more technical with this. Let's do File, Save As, 1830 Main East Elevation, JPEG. Technical is good. Format 1830 East Elevation. Click to add texture map. We are going to load an image from a file. So this is going to pull that file off of my computer. So that was on my D drive, my box, jury, 22517, 1830 Main East Elevation. And immediately this has a size, and I can preview how it's going to tile. If you remember, this dimension across to across was 50 feet. Enter. I now can infer my height as approximately 33 feet, 4 and 3 eighths of an inch. So let's say OK to both of those. So now I'm going to take, clicking on this face that I traced out, and we're going to extend it up. 33, oh, we're going to hit the tab key to pull that up, 33 feet, 4 inches. I'm going to select my elevation, 1830, my texture map of that elevation. I'm going to select the paintbrush, and I'm going to paint that surface right here. And now I have a few things that I can guide along and follow with. So I know at some point across here, and I should be way more precise than this. Please be more precise than this when you're doing your own project. This divides into an upper and lower piece. So let's go ahead and pull that down. I can certainly assume that this is a parapet system. So I'm going to select this top face, right click, and choose offset face. So we're going to bring that in about 18 inches for the parapet. 
I'm going to pull that inside face down about, again, hitting the tab key, six feet. And then we're going to isolate this front piece right here because this front piece comes up higher than the rest of the building around it. So again, I'm going to draw a line from edge to edge and a, and a second line edge to edge essentially div to divide this into two pieces so I can have an upper and a lower. So I'm going to take this face and bring it down about four feet. Now this next piece I have set so I can begin working to sort of define the character of the front of the building. So again, I, I could be really precise with this, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball these things together really quickly. I'm going to map those in, or block those in, I should say, and then we're going to come across, do that, and that. So now I've got that divided up into one, two, three, four, five faces. I'm going to select the outer faces, one and two, and pull them down to roughly match the top of the photograph. Do the next two faces in, this one and this one. Same trick. I'm going to pull those down. And again, I'm using the image on the right. Again, this is an image that's in perspective, so it's not necessarily going to match up left to right. So I'm looking more at you know using this side as a guide. So this time these edges slope, so I'm going to use this edge and bring it up. And now I want to match this edge to this edge. So again, I'm going to select that line. I'm going to click the corner and begin moving it up. And then I'm going to hold the shift key. And the shift key is going to lock in my vertical inference. And I can use that edge. So you can see a dash line running across right here. Um, no matter where I move my mouse, if I have my shift key held, it's going to move this line vertically. So I'm essentially going to match that to that to make sure all of those things line up. And that's beginning to get at the character of this. It looks to me like I should pull that up just a little bit more. So we're going to see the beginning of the tiling on that texture map, but I don't care. I'm looking more in terms of, is the character right? And I can do some of the same things with the windows. So let's do that really quick. Let's trace one of these out. So my pen tool, rectangle, there's my first window. I'm going to right click on that face, copy, right click on the overall face and say paste. I'm going to start, I'm not left clicking yet, but I'm going to start on that corner, slide it over and you'll be able to see that green dashed line. And I can place one, two, three, and four windows. Now, if you notice, I was using that green axis. Again, I can't use the photograph too much because it's in perspective. And I could have done my best to pull it out of perspective in Photoshop, but really I know once I get it in here, I can use my red, green, and blue axes to make sure everything's correct. So now I'm going to select these. So I'm selecting each object while holding down Control. And I'm going to push those windows back in about six inches to give them some depth. I can do the same thing to create a frame around the outside edge of all of the windows. You can see this sort of molding here. And again, I'm not going to go too crazy into the details with it, but I definitely like to get that idea of what's happening across. Again, I'm going to make sure I'm locked in on my green axis. I'm going to come down on my blue axis, place that. Let's select that surface and build a frame for it. And then we can offset that frame coming out away from the building. So I'm beginning to build that sense of relief across the building surface. And I can do the same thing with this sign. And this sign right here is right in the middle of this upper edge. So I'm gonna use my line tool. I'm gonna to grab the midpoint of that top edge. I'm gonna come down to the base of the sign then I'm going to draw out away from the building on the red axis. Let's do about three feet. 
back up on the blue axis. And again, I'm going to use Shift. Once I have that blue axis, I'm going to use Shift. You can see that blue axis go bold. And now again, no matter where I move my mouse, it's only going to go up and down. So I can lock my line into the height here. And then I can close that rectangle off to build a surface. So now I have a two-dimensional version of that sign. And now I just simply want to offset it or extrude that face six inches in each direction. Six inches this way, six inches that way. And now I have a one foot thick sign. Let's extend it up a little bit by making that top face its own piece of geometry. Now that's extending up. And I could build these parts coming in. Last little thing I might show you how to do. Let's say I want to build that canopy on the front. Same kind of techniques, I can pull that out. And then I can select this top edge and pull it down. And that's beginning to build those canopies along the front edge. So those techniques in combination begin to set up very, very quickly your context model. Um, if I select all of this, at any point in time, I can go back and simply paint it. you know, to go ahead and put it back to a basic surface, a basic white. There we go. Didn't quite grab all of it. There we go. Oh, come on. Got it. So I can look at that only as sort of those surface details, or I can continue to kind of touch up those texture maps to try and create something that's a little bit more photorealistic. For me, for my take, I'm most interested sort of in this formal context um, I can always go back and study the materials, uh, the photographs for the material context. This also gives me an idea of what I can start turning into a physical model as well. So the last piece that I want to do, I know that I'm going to come back and incorporate this into a larger piece of topography. So if we go back, let's set our location once again, import satellite photo. Let's go back to this larger urban context, finish importing. So you can see now I've got a small building, and it's not quite in the right spot anymore. So the last step that I want to do, once I have a building completed, is I'm going to highlight all of it. I'm going to right-click and turn it into a group. Again, I want to name this group with the street address. So once I have that done, I should be able to, to select it. And let's look at its properties. So I'm going up to the Properties panel here, click to set name. That was 1830 Main. And again, if you use the street address, that's going to keep things kind of clean and neat. And once I have that as a group, I can move it to the right location on that lower resolution um, satellite photograph. And that way I can start building up the context for the entire model. If I find out that I need to add a little bit more detail in later, I can select that group, double click on it, and let's say add that parapet on this little piece right back here that I forgot. Remove that middle line, just pull that back down, get that looking a little bit more believable. And then I can just click, double click off of that file, and it goes back to being its entire group. So that closes that detail of starting to build context models based off of Google Maps, Street View and form it.